like to call this uh, March 11th council meeting to order. Would everybody please rise? And let's remember all of those who passed away during the month. Please salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Dillon, you want to do roll call, please? Mr. Peasant. Ms. Cohen. Here. Ms. Rodriguez. Mr. Cousin? Here. Ms. Figueroa? Here. Mr. Johnson? Here. Mr. Catrucci? Present. Mr. Peterson? Here. Okay. We have a couple of presentations uh, this evening. First, I'm going to call up the uh, class from the Puerto Rican Culture Association. Can you go to the podium and state your name and address for the record? Yes, uh, my name is Luz Ruiz, and I live at 221 Radcliffe Street. Okay. Buenas noches, everyone. I appreciate your time and the opportunity to talk with you tonight about our association. As I said, my name is Luz Ruiz. I am the president of the Puerto Rican Cultural Association of Fox County. In addition, I am a resident of historic Bristol Borough and I am proud to call myself a Bristol Rican. To begin, I will be speaking about two important points. One, to make you and the residents of Bristol aware of the artistic and cultural events our association provides <clears throat> or is involved with directly or indirectly. Two, to invite our residents to join as a member or as a volunteer to help us do something great for our community. As you probably know, our association is responsible for, our, for organizing the annual Puerto Rican Day Festival. Additionally, we grant two $500 scholarships to high school graduates each year. We integrate a variety of fundraising activities throughout the year to make our organization stronger and to meet our goals. <clears throat> Also, we are involved in Bristol's Christmas Parade and Bristol Historic Day, and we took part in Bristol's First Friday. We look forward to participating in the Sunday Stroll. These are just some examples of what we have done traditionally. But did you know that we, too, commemorate Hibaro Night? Hibaro Night is a cultural and family event. It is celebrated with free food and Hibaro music a week before the festival. This event is important for two reasons. First reason, it emphasizes the life of the Puerto Rican Hibaro, the mountain people of Puerto Rico, nuestra gente de la montaña. Second reason, because representation matters. Did you also know that our Hibaro is very different from the main character Hibaro in the Netflix animated series, Love, Death, and Robots? The short story, also titled Hibaro, was written by the Spanish artist and animator Alberto Mielgo. Mielgo's Hibaro represents a deaf conquistador who engages in toxic relationships and who uses people and natural resources for his own benefit. On the contrary, our Boricua Hibaro is resilient, 
humble and wise. He, she is giving and generous, loves, respects, and works the land to live and to benefit others. For example, there are heroes leading sustainable farming projects on the island and in the States today, as well as heroes fighting for social justice and colonialism. With this historical context in mind, it is our hope to be like our Therefore, it is the association's goal to move our mission and vision forward in a welcoming and respectful way. We will be seeking collaboration and working with others for everyone's benefit. Our intention now considers future goals like planning to integrate community service from other agencies to help families in our community. We aim to help facilitate interactions with such agencies soon. Furthermore, we are aiming to bridge some gaps between diverse cultures by having planned interactions with different cultural associations in the Box County area. We believe that this approach would bridge communication between people who otherwise would not interact with each other. We brought a handout in both English and Spanish. It provides relevant information for those of you who are interested in finding more about our association. We want to extend an invitation to the residents of this great borough to join our association as a member or as a volunteer to help us do something wonderful for our community. In conclusion, I want to thank Mr. Mayor the Giuseppe III, Borough Manager Mr. Dillon, Council President Mr. Giuseppe, Council Vice President Mrs. Rodriguez, who is not here today, um, and all other council members, and the rest of the audience for coming today to see, to, uh, to listen to me tonight. Gracias y buenas noches. Any questions? I, I have a couple of questions. You, you do? <laughs> so, to join your organization, it's on, it's on this panel. Yes. But how do you get this out to everybody in town? Do you want to mention it on TV so everybody at home can hear this? Uh, how to join? Yes, that would be nice. Go ahead. Okay. So as I said, I we we plan. We are we have many plans for our association. I know that it, it seems to me that when I speak to people, they have the understanding that we only do the Puerto Rican festival. But I want them to know that the Puerto Rican festival is something that does not define us. Even though it is our greatest, our biggest event, it's not the event that defines the association. We want to do more. As I mentioned, we do Hibaro Night, and we do a lot of fundraising activities. We are planning to do, for example, a Mother Day um, dance. We want to do bingo. We want to do many other things uh, so, to attract people. So that's one way that we want to uh, bring people to our association. Yes. So, so why don't you give them the email how to contact you sure. or whoever to join? Yes, um, on the brochure, um, we, we included my phone number, okay? My number is, I said text loose. If you are interested, uh, you can text loose myself. And my number is 215-756-4891. Or email me at lo to lose that Ruiz. 4526 at gmail.com. 
or you can text Nereida, the association secretary. Her number is 215-439-6619 or email her Nereida mb32 at gmail.com or you can like us you can visit or like us on Facebook and you can write us in English and Spanish so what we're going to do is we're going to put some of these in Borough Hall so if somebody wants to come here and we'll have the number or whatever to give them we'll put them out on the table yes. uh, we can also share this on our, our Barrow Facebook and social media pages that we have do you oh, have this fantastic. in a digital format that you can email? I can email that to if you. If you can email this to me, I'll make sure we get it on our social media pages for you. Okay, great. <clears throat> thank you, thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank and you. Thank let you. me just say one more thing before you end. You got the right person sitting right there. A lot of experience right there, let me tell you. Yes. <laughs> That's right. We have great people working with us. Oh, I know Carmen's a very, very good person to have, so. Yes. I agree. Thank you so very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. We have the uh, who's presenting for the car lot? Mr. Fiervanti is the engineer. Pardon. Mr. Fiervanti, the engineer, is presenting on behalf of the applicants for the Bath Road plan development. Okay. Good evening, Mr. President. If I might, I'll set up the easel. Yeah. For the sure. you, put it right here. you can put it here if you want or wherever you want. You know what? We have it here. Good evening, Mr. President, members of council, Vince Fioravanti here with Ilya Vorboy and his partners uh, on the redevelopment of 802 Bath Street. Uh, we have a half acre lot, entrance lot to the, uh, to the borough. Uh, and as you know, in the past, it's been a uh, site for a petroleum uh, fueling station for loop oil and has uh, some history that I'm sure everyone's aware of. Um, what we'd like to do tonight is present our plans quickly for the redevelopment of the facility as a small but high-end vehicle sales facility. It's a half acre lot. We're proposing a 1,650 square foot building, 750 square feet of office, two garage bays, five employees, um, 19 display vehicle spaces. The parking requirement will be 34 spaces. We have 46 proposed. Uh, one unique thing about the property in its current condition, <coughs> it was again a fueling station for loop oil. And over the years, there were some uh, petroleum releases, um, been there since the 50s. Um, there were releases of petroleum, they've been mitigated, tanks have been removed, DEP, DEP closure plans have been approved with conditions. Um, there are four of the conditions. Uh, one of them is that the impervious cap on the site has to remain in place, and they have an estimate of 30 year timetable uh, for the mitigation to be complete in the underground groundwater. So the paving that exists on the property 
is mandated to stay in place and has to be inspected every year and it's been going through its inspections. Um, so that led to some of the waivers that we were requesting because we're not allowed to break the impervious cap and there's also vapor barriers that have to be used and ground, ground um, soil removed from the site has to be removed in a certain, certain manner and disposed of in certain locations. So there are a couple of conditions. Most important really is that the impervious, it's like 99% impervious, has to stay in place. So they kind of limited us into what we can do aesthetically. And we do understand that it is an entrance lot and we've worked with the township engineer and the planning commission members to do everything possible to provide aesthetic upgrades to the site. You can see on this exhibit before you, uh, you can see the building here. It's a new modern building. It'll be very beautiful when it's, when it's built. Um, so we did what we, uh, everything we could do with architecture. We think that the building will be nice with up lights and everything, so it'll be a nice look when you're coming in. Uh, we also went back a couple times with the Planning Commission. We had a monument signs, you can see them here, with historic Crystal Borough, welcome to the borough type of signage. Um, there are monument signs that are very attractive, and there's a couple on each side here. There's one on each entrance, one there, one over there, challenging my eyesight from here. Um, but they're large signs, they'll, they'll be you know, uplit, and it'll look nice when you're entering in. Uh, we also modified our light fixtures to match the, uh, uh, the borough standard light fixtures that we have on the main streets in the borough. So all the light fixtures, I think you can see them here, all throughout the entire site. At night when it's lit up, it'll be the same type of look that you have throughout the borough. So we went with that, <coughs> those exact same details for the lighting fixtures. Um, if we can take that exhibit down, there's a site plan underneath. No, no, just lower it, yeah. Yep. So I went through the other amenities that we added to the site, and we did everything we could possibly think of. And then uh, we came back to there's still no greenery or landscaping. And as I explained, we're really not permitted to do that. Uh, but we can put plants and evergreen trees and flowers and potted landscaping. So we came back uh, with this exhibit, and what you'll see here is what we propose to do on the site. First, you see the location of the signs that, that were, we talked about here and here, and there's another one down here. And there are blow-ups of the signs are shown here. So that they're not small signs, it's a big endeavor, and that'll be nice. And we talked about the lights that exist. This plan shows what we propose to do with planters, and I think it'll be nice, and uh, I would specify a three-foot diameter planter for each of the perimeter planters that you see along here, and we will put them right at the end of the parking stall, three-foot diameter, so it'll go a foot and a half in every direction. Um, still enough for us to use the parking spaces, um, but they'll be heavy enough that people won't be walking away with them, or they won't be blowing out in the street. You know, they'll, they'll be stable and heavy and permanent. And uh, so we think we can do that, and it'll look very nice. Um, we can have evergreens and a mix of evergreens and, and shrubs that'll give us color. So we can have that along the perimeter. Then along the inside as well, we also have them on the perimeter here, and then smaller potted plants, you know, along where the building would be. Um, but the biggest thing I think that would add to the, uh, the look of it would be the perimeter potted plants, and there's a lot of different types of commercial planters that look nice, dwarf evergreens, and. As I said, you know, different flower treatments we can put in there. So we'll have added this to the plan, and it'll be uh, you know, part of the um, resolution. We did look through the resolution. We agree with everything that's contained therein. Um, we do have letters that we've collected from all the consultants. They all will comply. Um, there were 10 waivers, and eight of those waivers related to infiltrating stormwater and planting landscape buffers, uh, things that we're not allowed to do because of the DEP closure cap. So I think any um, applicant that would follow us um, would also need the same 10 waivers um, because eight of them would be, you know, part of the DEP closure. Uh, the other two, one was the, I believe, the distance showing features within 400 feet. And we'll do that with an aerial. That's, that's a very standard waiver. And the other was a transportation impact study. We requested a waiver from that as well. Uh, this won't be a high traffic generator, and it's at a signalized intersection. Um, all the other site plans, there are many site plans underneath that exhibit. Um, they show utilities and 
and different details that have been uh, submitted for review by the various consultants. So with that being our presentation, we'd like the board to look at this and if uh, you deem appropriate, we would request an approval. Mr. Fioravani, what's the date of the plans that are shown, you've shown tonight that include the amenities as far as the greenery and the signage? Uh, we can date that at, as tonight's date. Today's date? Yes. Is it dated today's date? So I think, okay, I'll show you. Question. Yes. There's no sidewalk running from, let's say, 13 down faster. It only goes part of the way and then it stops. I think there's sidewalk on all of our frontages, on both frontages. Okay, the picture, the rendering didn't show. Yeah. There's sidewalk there now. There's existing Staying. sidewalk there. That's, That's remaining. I just want to yes. make sure because one of on the photo it looks like it's it stops at the. Uh, yes. Yeah. There's sidewalk. Yeah. There's there's definitely sidewalk along the whole perimeter. Going down towards the railroad. Yes. It's in that, both directions. That is a sidewalk there. Yep. I can see it on the plan now. Right. Okay. And how many spaces are? You mentioned the spaces. How many are are for? Sales and how many are for your employees and customers? There will be five employees, 19 display vehicles, and 46 spots. So if we would take the, the 24, 46 minus 24, that would be for customers that would come to. Okay. You know, so there would be plenty of parking. Yeah. And that's, that's using the same the paving that already exists. Mm -hmm. It's just exactly the size we need to have the right dimensions for fire access, 24 foot wide, uh, two way aisles parking stalls just kind of works out exactly what we need and it's all paving it's already there thank you thank you any other questions no i got i got a few things so apparently our solicitor is going to speak on this uh yes, he prepared a four page document i prepared a resolution for council's consideration yes okay. So I think most of the concern is that it's going to end up another junk parlor. That there's going to be trailers out there, there's going to be vans out there. Mm -hmm. It's just going to look like trash is a main entrance coming into Bristol. Right. Just like other car lots, they're parked on the road. They're they're supposed to have 16 cars. They got 25 cars. Neighbors are complaining. How do we prevent that from happening? I, I, like how do we restrict stuff like that, Jeff? Well, you can restrict as a condition of approval. All we can sell is motor vehicles like cars and trucks. Trucks have to be pickup trucks. You're not selling. You're not selling uh, tractors, dump or, trucks, or tractor trailers, are you? No. no. We can restrict it to just passenger vehicles and pickup trucks. That's a pleasure of council. And how do we make sure that this lot is not going to be an eyesore coming into town? Well, they're going to have to comply with the approved plans, not to comply with this condition if, it's, if we add this condition. So why don't you explain what you said about all these variances that at the zoning uh, planning meeting? The planning Commission had an issue because there were too many of them, but I don't know that they understood that the vast majority are related to DEP requirements on the site. The only two that weren't related to it had to do with whether you had to show all the improvements on the plan, but it's very common to just to show an aerial photo, photo of it so you know what it is. And the other one was having to do with, I forgot now. Transportation, uh, tra traffic transportation impact, impact study. Impact study, but obviously an impact study is not going to tell you a whole lot about it. A facility that's selling 17 cars on the lot. So they were the only two real yes. waivers that were not related to DEP restrictions. And there's no repair work being done. Now we do have two garage bays on here, but that's only to just service the cars as they come in to be sold. When a car would typically come in, it might be cleaned or you know might be prepared for sale, and then it would move out to the display. So I couldn't bring my car here to get fixed. Correct. You got it. Nobody can hear you at home, so you got to go there. So the 
lieutenant we have, uh, he uh, is not going to do any kind of tire changes or anything like that. The majority is going to be electrical work for the cars that is going to be ready before you're going to swap the tools. So all they're going to do is if you're going to put it, you're selling a car, you're going to make sure it's, it's the car you're fixing is the car that's going in your garage. Correct. You're yes. not bringing any outside no, it's only parts. For the I mean, the corner right now is an eyesore, and we want something that looks nice. I think the building you, you designed is a nice looking building. There's a lot of glass, there's a lot of lighting. I mean, I talked to the two council people, Mr. Cousin and Mrs. Rodriguez, prior to the meeting that they were concerned, and I talked to Lee again tonight, they're concerned that this doesn't end up like a another car lot that you know, we're dealing with a nuisance every week. Uh, I think if the solicitor's guaranteeing us that well, I'm not, not guaranteeing, guaranteeing but you're saying that we can enforce we can enforce something that we're gonna put in a restriction that you're gonna follow these rules. I mean I don't know. Like we've had problems with parking in other lots. So where do all the people park when they come there to look at a car? There are uh, customer display spaces identified on the drawings. So, and, and this, uh, spaces will be marked when the site is striped and the lighting's put in. All the spaces for customer parking will be labeled for customer parking. So when you come in and you're, you're making a loop around in there, you'll see where it says customer parking. It's designated areas where you're to park. I think the other thing that we can um, agree to is that the 24 foot wide aisle that goes through the entire place has to stay clear at all times. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, agreeing to that is a big deal because then you're not able to block it with exactly. cars and you know, it's for fire emergency access. Right. And if the aisles are clean and clear, the only place the cars could be is right where they belong, right in those parking stalls. So, you know, we could have uh, add signage maybe to the site uh, that the aisles not to be blocked. I think that will go a long way uh, as to prevent cars from being just piled up in there, which is what no one wants to see. Exactly. So I, think I don't think anybody's that. opposed to this as much as concerned that we're working so hard to, for beautification in town to make sure everything's done right. And then we do understand that, you know, it's a, it's a entrance lot and then, and you so say we've done a lot to make it, it will look beautiful. It just has to be operated properly. And what were and the hours of operation? It's uh, 10 to 6 during the week, uh, 10 to 4 on Saturday, and he will be closed on Sundays. He will be closed he on Sundays. He will be closed on Sundays, yeah. And, uh, you know, just if I may add, uh, we designed this building uh, because we think it's a beautiful building and it's not going to be, you know, it's, it's not a cheap project to complete. So last thing we want is our tenant to neglect it with, you know, junk cars like you mentioned and stuff like that. So we really want to make sure that this stays you know, the value of the building is amazing because it remains uh, with the lights and the signs and the building itself. Okay, thank you. All right, so does anybody else have any questions? Jeff, anything uh, else? I have none other than to say, I think the council was provided a copy of the draft resolution, as was Mr. Fioravanti. But obviously we would add the fact that compliance with the plan, A31124, with respect to the amenities, Next, that the they will be selling only passenger vehicles and pickup trucks, no third-party repairs, no third-party parking on the site except related to the business, and the hours of operation 10 to 6 on weekdays, 10 to 4 on Saturdays, and closed on Sundays. Mr. Fiervanti, are those conditions all acceptable, including the ones in the resolution I sent? Yes. And no aisles will be blocked? No, no, uh, no aisles will be blocked either. To park additional cars. What's the man that she's got to do? Man, do you have anything you want to add to this? I know you've been reviewing it. Just one thing to know: there were previous variances granted by the Zoning Hearing Board, um, and so they're they're also included in our letter and noted there. Um, and also that these are this property is on two state roads, so um, any approvals tonight are also subject to PennDOT's approval as well, which they still need to obtain. Do you see any major issues with this or? Um, major issues, I would say at this point, no. There is still a lengthy review letter um, from, from my office. Um, but again, a lot of that is due to the fact that 
um, they have environmental restrictions, and also the property is technically located in a flood zone, so they do have to comply with all of those requirements as well. So that would be from a building code standpoint too. Um, and then as far as any sort of site distance, um, you know, requirements for PennDOT, again, that gateway sign, the planters would all be subject to PennDOT's review as well. I mean, uh, the, I'm sorry, I was going to say the Gilmore letter is incorporated as a condition, as is compliance with other requirements, including PennDOT, so we've covered it in the draft presentation. I mean, does PennDOT allow any on-street parking there in the 13th side or Bass Street side? I do not believe parking is I know that. I know that nobody usually parks there, yeah. but is it... This is one of the issues when we have these small car lots because next thing you know, people are parking, right. even the, the owners are parking cars for sale out on the street and we certainly don't, we don't want that. I don't think they, they're building such a nice facility, why would they park them on the street? But I was just wondering, is there a requirement or is there a restriction from PennDOT in that area? No parking, yeah, okay. so there's no parking. Um, and also, just to kind of answer your question from earlier, there is no current sidewalk along Route 13 in that stretch right on the property frontage, but they are proposing to install it. Okay. So that's why you didn't see it on the rendering. <laughs> oh, I, I thought there was sidewalk out there, no? There's sidewalk there down Bath Street, but it's actually not right along Bristol Pike right there. Do, you have, do they have any other car lots anywhere? So the tenant we have, he has six locations, different locations. One of his locations was on uh, Woodhaven Road, uh, when we get off uh, like Byberry exit. And uh, now uh, he has some in Philadelphia. So six locations. So you have one off Woodhaven? Uh, there was one of his previous is lots. Is that where Enterprise retail. is? Um, yeah. No, no, what, right when you get off in Woodhaven, from Evans Street, the small street. Uh, he sold that location, I think, like six, seven years ago, but there was one of his, uh, Location that you might know about the rest of Philadelphia. And everybody happy in the neighborhood, no violations, no nothing? As far as I know, it's keeping good track of it. All right. Any other questions? Lee, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm okay. Um, I want more things that are harassing or, you know, just kind of, you know, on our minds. So as long as the things are not enough. All right. I just want you to that's, know. The, that's the end of our presentation. I, I just want you to know my phone's just constantly blowing. <laughs> right blowing now. up with questions. <laughs> but we're, we're willing to, to, uh, to state that we want to comply with the plan as presented and all the conditions of the resolution. And I think if, if that's the case, then it should end up being something that will really be an attraction to the, uh, to the township as you come through. It, it will be the borough, Vince. Borough, yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be like going in the park. You got the diner with all the lights, <laughs> right. and the car lot with the lights. And... All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, public participation. Anybody in the public have anything they'd like to discuss? That ends public participation. All right. We're moving along. Mayor, we have. Um, I have a few things to discuss. So. First thing I wanted to mention is as the residents are driving around town, they're noticing the work on Mill and Rackliff Street is progressing. And you see that there are detour signs that are covered right now with black drapes. That detour will start going into effect on Monday, March 18th. So I just uh, want to advise the residents to please pay attention to the signage throughout town because traffic patterns will change um, since that corner will be shut down for a little while. Um, also, in talking about traffic, I wanted to ask the Bever manager if we can contact PennDOT regarding Route 13 and Green Lane, the, making the left into the Barrow if you're coming from like the Home Depot area. You can't even notice that green traffic turning arrow until you're almost up on the light. And the same thing with the turnpike entrance. Those, those green lights are, you know, unvisible until you rarely get on top of them. And 
I could just, God forbid, see a traffic issue there, an accident happening. So if we can reach out to PennDOT just about looking into maybe upgrading or doing something with those lights. A uh, couple events we have going on in town. May 4th, we have a shred event. Um, more information will be available on the Barrow website and Facebook page. Just wanted to let the residents know that if you're cleaning out come the spring, now's the time to bring everything to the Barrow and get it shredded on May 4th. April 6th, the fr uh, Friends of Bristol Meeting are planning a tree celebration to commemorate their Penn Sycamore at 235 Market. They have a tree that's approximately 328 years old. So they are planning an event to celebrate their 328 year old tree. Uh, Time TBD. Please check the Barrow uh, website and Facebook and Instagram page for more information on that. Um, sticking with the celebration theme, Sunday, the 29th. Um, of September. I know it's far out, but there's a lot of planning to go into some of these events. We are planning with the Bristol Cultural and Historical Foundation a 200th celebration of General Lafayette's tour through the Barrow. Um, there are t-shirts designed, there are banners that are going to fly throughout Rackham Street um, in the Barrow honoring his uh, visit to the Barrow. There's going to be commemorative street signs placed on Lafayette Street that will remain in place forever. Um, Mary Jeswaldi and her committee from the Bristol Historical Foundation is help leading this charge. I've thankfully been involved in the meetings to help coordinate everything, but it is gonna be an awesome celebration. September 29th, starting at 2 p.m. They're gonna start at Adams Hollow Creek. They have someone that's going to obviously um, impersonate General Lafayette. He's going to be coming down on horse and buggy. There's live music. There's bands. There's going to be the unveiling of the mural on top of the Mill Street Cantina. So there is so much going on that day. It's going to be a great celebration in the borough. Additionally, the Cultural and Historical Foundation, if people want to donate to help this cause, um, there is a donation brochure. They can contact the Cultural and Historical Foundation or contact the borough for more information. And I just want to say that this little arch that they're going to be selling and the commemorative t-shirt were designed by Bristol's own Mike Crossan. So he's done an awesome job in helping the Cultural and Historical Foundation with the celebration. Um, what else do I have? I wanted to bring up something that I think we need to consider from a borough standpoint is that I'm getting a lot of complaints of parking issues on the 100 and 200 blocks of Cedar and Wood. Um, now that, you know, Mill Street is bustling and, you know, there's a lot of foot traffic and we have all this great economic development, the residents are just complaining that during, you know, theater play uh, promotions or when the Mill Street's bustling with people visiting the restaurants and the bars, you know, they're like, we can't even unload our groceries. So I think the borough needs to take into consideration maybe creating just for those 100 and 200 block in that area, like resident only parking or um, give them a permit to park on those two blocks like we do on Ratcliffe Street. And then we can add, the beauty of the app is we can add them to the zones and create zones for those like four blocks in that area. It's something that we should take into consideration. I mean. The economic development's great, but the people that live on these two blocks are really paying the price for what's going on, and I think we need to look out for the residents as well as, you know, the thriving businesses on Mill Street. So it's something we should discuss and talk about in the future, and I just wanted to put it out there because I am getting a lot of phone calls and emails along with the chief about, you know, hey, I had to unload my groceries in the middle of the street and then go park down the hill because there's so much going on, which is a good problem to have, but we need to look out for the residents. So I just wanted to put that out there. A um, couple more things I have is that, you know, the weather's getting nice. So you will see a lot of people walking, running all around town. We will have the electronic bikes out now that the weather's breaking. The UTV has already been out throughout town. So, you know, that's something to look forward to. So we love seeing the pedestrians out there, but we want to let you know that we have your best interest at hand and we're going to have the cops patrolling the town, especially on these electronic bikes that we have. Also, the chief and I have been talking about uh, putting the process in place with the Civil Service Commission to give the sergeant's test. We have open 
spots in terms of um, our sergeants in the police department. So we are preparing that information and we're going to reach out to the Civil Service Commission about getting a date on hand to get that test in place. So I wanted to mention that. And then the last thing I just wanted to mention is on the agenda, you will see an item to approve a $49,000 cost to the borough for the next 12 months for the co-responder program. The co-responder program was instituted by the county. It was in place from January uh, for the first two years, January 22 until the end of 23, and at no cost to the borough. And now they're asking us to pick up the cost in addition um, to contributing with Tullytown and Bristol Township. It is a great program. It is a program that assists our police department, especially with a lot of mental health issues they respond to, anxiety, depression, amongst other things. In just the short time of January 22 to September 23, we had 488 encounters. Now, a lot of them are repeat follow-ups with people in town. So I'm asking the council to consider that motion on the agenda tonight and please vote for the co-responder program. Anybody have any questions? Any questions? That's Chief, all do you have anything? The second one we are said about the co-responder program. It's very valuable for the big asset. And the way it's being handled is Bristol Township's picking up 50% and Bristol Borough and Tully Town are picking up 25%. Correct. So that's how the, the split is being done. And everybody's Bristol Township uses it way more than we do uh, in Tully Town. So, I think it's a good program. The commissioners are pushing for this program. They think it's great. I know you had chiefs meetings with the other chiefs regarding this. So I think it's something that we try for another year and see what happens. Okay. Uh, before I apologize, John, I know you're, you've been here all day. So our inspector here, uh, John Miller's here and he wants to go over a few things with everybody. <clears throat> Okay, uh, as you know, last year we began a sidewalk inspection program. This was due to the bringing the borough into compliance with the American Disabilities Act, which is a federal mandate. Uh, we, it, last year it ran from May 2023 until the end of October 2023. Um, I would recommend that we begin the program again, starting again on May 1st, 2024, and running it until October 31st, 2024. We have approximately 60% of the town completed the inspections. Um, so approximately 40 to 45% left. And that'll take the town into compliance, at least for now. So, so just so everybody understands, this program was not established by council or anybody. This program was established under the American Disability Act for our town to become compliance with the act. It's a and that's it's how a this whole mandate. thing started. So, you know, I think it's a good program because you have a lot of people and elderly people, whoever, you know, that uh, can trip on your sidewalk. And if you go on, put your TV on, all you hear now is law firms saying, if somebody trips on your sidewalk, contact us because you're responsible for it. And the borough gets brought into all these lawsuits. And I think you guys are being very lenient. If people need time, you work with them. Absolutely. We, uh, uh, we I, if people need an extension of time, we're more than willing to grant right. that. I think what happens is you get that 30 day notice and everybody panics. But if you call, it tells you on there, if you have an issue, call the borough. The borough, look, we're not going to wait a year for you to fix it. But contract, like Mr. Gatrochi said earlier, to get a contractor today within 30 days is hard. That's how busy everybody is. So we'll work with you, but we're not going to overlook the fact that we're not going to comply with the American Disability Act. Correct. Uh, our next thing is uh, discussions with council about approving the uh, curb appeal of the barrel. So I was, I'm proposing that we do a porch and facade program, which would include uh, Porches which are in dire need of repair, and that can include painting or structural repairs. Okay. We will uh, send an, a letter to the folks to take care of that, and uh, hopefully we get good compliance with it. 
there is money available from the RDA. <coughs> uh, and Ralph, I believe you can speak more on that. But uh, and there's also um, we're looking into a grant for it too. So hopefully we can uh, get that program really started. I, again, propose since we'll be out walking the streets again in, in the spring and summer and fall that we're going to incorporate both programs together. So what John's saying is that. Uh, we crack down on rental properties, but the rental the people that own these properties now are saying, I fix my porch and the one next to me is falling down or the one next to me is rotted out. So I think we need to, we want to try to beautify the town. That's just what we said to the car lot, that everybody should comply. And if you don't have the money, there's money out there to help you if you fall under a certain amount of income. And I sit as the chairman of the RDA, and I know for a fact that if you apply to the RDA, that there are funds available to help you get this work done. If you have money and you're just neglecting it, then you need to fix it. So again, we're not going to force you to say, you know, in two weeks, you got to have this done, but we want to get it done. We want our town to shine. That's what it all comes down to. We have a lot of people visiting town, I think we're booming in all directions, and we need to make sure that aesthetically our town looks good, whether it's sweeping your sidewalk or cleaning your gutters or whatever. Make the Take pride in what you're doing. And, and we are as a council, we try to fix things up, and we're going to get our building repainted this year. We need some maintenance done here. So uh, again, Take some pride in your property and fix it up. And if you can't afford it, we will assist you or help you in any way we can to get you funds to make your property look nice. And we'll also look into, uh, since we'll be out in the back again, as I spoke earlier, we're going to uh, go for the shade trees again. With the shade tree replacement program, people who are missing shade trees or have inappropriate shade trees, the trees that need work, uh, we're going to be addressing those issues also in the spring, summer, and fall. So I think we want to, do you want me to touch on that or no? Uh, that's kind of self-explanatory. I mean, um, we're going to have a list of trees, approved trees and sizes. Uh, shrubs aren't going to be allowed. Uh, planters, like people who have planters in these tree wells, without, and they're missing a tree, that's got to be removed. So uh, we'll address that and we'll address each case on an individual basis. Okay. So does anybody on council have any more questions for John? John, um, when people have trash in your yards, are you able to go there and tell them? Yes. Okay. So especially keep an eye out for that because I've seen a lot. We, we get a lot of complaints. Actually, last year, uh, just for property maintenance issues, which are like trash, junk vehicles, overgrown grass, mm -hmm. we had over, we answered over 2,400 complaints. Okay. And Thank before, you. anything else? Yeah. Before John leaves, I just want to say one more thing to residents at home. Our inspectors will start working weekends. So on Correct. Saturdays and Sundays, they're going to be riding around town. And people working without permits on your home, it's really something that you should require because if something happens, you as a homeowner, and I've been saying this since I've been sitting here, are responsible for what happens. I mean, if you hire an electrician, you hire a roofer, God forbid, he falls off the roof, and he's working for you because he doesn't have a permit, you're responsible. If your house burns down, you're responsible. Let them get a permit and have a license. A legitimate contractor has no problem getting what he has to get. And it doesn't cost you more. So when people say, oh, you gotta pay for a permit, you're gonna spend $50 for a permit, but you're paying somebody $5,000 to do a job or more. So to me, it makes no sense, but that's totally up to you as a resident. But we will have our inspectors riding around for people moving in and out of rental units without getting rental registrations or change of tenants. We're going to crack down on a lot of things. So we just want to make sure our town, we're doing the right thing for our residents and we want to keep our town moving in the right direction. 
I would encourage all residents that they do have a question about obtaining the permits, if they're required to call our office, and we'll let you know whether you're required for a permit for that type of work or not. Are we able to get a list of the uh, permits that people would get, like the roofing permit, like the fence permit, and put a price next to it, or is that a lot of jobs? We, uh, it depends upon a lot upon the cost of the job. Um, certain price, certain jobs have a fixed price, like a fence permit, a fixed price. But if you're doing like a, a home remodeling type project, it's all based upon the it's on a sliding scale, and it's all based upon the cost of the job, the cost of the work being done. Okay, and our girls are very helpful up here. So anything you need, call the borough, and they're more than willing, and John's here or whoever, to help you walk through whatever process you need. Any questions for John? Thanks, John. Thank I know you, you want to get home. You've been here since 8 o'clock. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just going to continue from where I'm at before I go to council. So our uh, tax collector, Anna Lyers, he has want, wants me to inform everyone at home that if you did not receive your tax bill, they were mailed out. So all borrowed tax bills were mailed. You should have received one by now. If you have not received your tax bill, you can call the tax office at 215-788. 1600. So it's 215-788-1600 if you did not receive your tax bill. And I know Anna and Ginny will help you in any way they can. They're very uh, helpful with anybody that goes in the office. So if you didn't receive a bill, call there. And we'll put that up on our, up on our site also. We need to talk to Greg. Our street sweeper were starting on Thursday, April 4th. So the 4th and the 18th, uh, well, the 4th will run two weeks and then on the 18th, we'll start issuing tickets again. So and again, we don't wanna give anyone a ticket. We wanna make sure our streets are clean. That's the purpose of a street sweeper, to move your car to make sure our, our street is clean. So again, it's gonna start on April 4th, and on the 18th, uh, we will help be ticketing cars. The next thing is our, we purchased the last home on Chestnut Street. Uh, this Wednesday, there is a bid opening for the demolition, and we hope on starting the demolition no later than April 1st, in our contract and we have a June uh, completion date. So we're giving the contractor a 90 day window to do all the demo, backfill, clean it, everything goes, we're bringing dirt in and they're gonna plant grass. So that site should be down no later than June. Again, with the help of State Representative Tina Davis and our State Senator Steve Sanicero, we were able to secure a couple million dollar grant to acquire the remaining homes and to do the demolition on them two streets. So we'll have some kind of a uh, opening there. All the residents will be getting a letter prior to the start of demolition. Uh, I know me and Louie's been fighting this for a long time and we're finally there. It's been a long haul, but it's going to happen in the next few weeks. So everybody on Jefferson and Pond will finally be able to uh, look out their backyard and be happy. The other thing is I had numerous meetings with a couple different playground companies. I mentioned last month about redoing all of our playgrounds, not totally renovating, mm -hmm. but to add more equipment and put some more stuff in. And I'm trying to do a lot of stuff. It's called inclusion for people that are handicapped, Down syndrome, uh, autism, things like that. So we're looking at new rides, new things that will attract these kids, uh, new uh, safety surface. So they're telling us they're going to have some proposals for council to look at over the next month or so. I was hoping to have it done by this year. They're saying to get the equipment, get it installed, and all you're probably talking six months right now before you can get anything done. 
that's how backed up they are. So it's something that uh, we thought, again, when we met with them, but he said there's no shot that we can get it done that quick. But they're evaluating all our playgrounds from Google Earth. They're going to come up with a whole new system to see what could be put there. And I think it's going to be nice when we're done. They're going to fix the things that are broken. We're fixing them now. Okay. We're doing that. Okay. We ordered all, all the parts have been ordered for anything that's uh, swing seats, all that stuff. But like the new swings, they have harnesses where you could harness somebody in. There are some things, they, there are twirlers where you could put a wheelchair right in. And uh, people also could sit on the same ride so that they don't feel isolated. You can put the wheelchair in, the parents could be in. They even had seesaws, like not the common we were kids, that you jump off and somebody hits the ground. But you could go in, you could get four people, you could put a wheelchair on it, and they could go up and down. So oh, that's great. the whole thing is different today. That's awesome. They said our equipment is so obsolete, but it still serves its purpose. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we could do a little bit and start moving in that direction. The other thing is, I don't know, Everybody looked, but we did start doing work at the ball fields. We're ripping all the dugout roofs off, putting all new roofs. We're doing it in-house with our uh, maintenance guys. So I think they already did two or three dugouts. There are going to be new roofs painted. So that field, when we get done, all the doors are going to be painted. The buildings are going to be painted. The old building behind the softball field is going to come down completely. Probably a new building will go up uh, for storage. Uh, the press box down the other end is getting painted. The concession stand is going to be painted. New doors, if they need it, if not, they'll be fixed. So the fields are going to look nice, but you know we're gradually working towards and moving in that direction. Fields, playground. something else I'll come back because I'm drawing a blank. Lorraine, what do you have? Um, I, I want to ask the chief. Um, the playgrounds have like a lot of track in them and I'm not going to say what's in there but in the in the day time people call me and say so um, could you remind the police officers to shine when they're riding by there shine their light in there as often as they can. You have one of those right? You could yeah. shine and uh, you know, in all of them, because it's really upsetting for me to get a call from a parent. They say it's right. really bad. Also, if somebody sees somebody, you get somebody on the playground, they could go dark and you call, they always go on the phone. Thank you. Also, um, some re residents have been asking about no run and jobs, they're waiting for jobs. But I want you to know that I'm still waiting for an email address. Uh, that's how they want you to apply. But they haven't given us one yet. So uh, as soon as I get it, I promise you, we will mention it on here. Um, and I'll put it on Facebook. I'll call the people that have called me. I'll call you back. Um, I want you to know that the building is pretty incredible. Uh, inside, I've been in there. I was in there uh, two weeks ago. And it's amazing what they're doing in there, but you know, it's going to take a really long time because they have to get accredited by the state and by just so many people. Um, I'm just hoping that while I'm alive, it, it'll open. <laughs> um, also, um, I've noticed that people walk their dogs without trash bags. And it's really a problem. So please bring a trash bag out with you. Pick your dog poop up. It's terrible. And if you, like, just say you run out or you're, you, like, I had a big dog and I would knock at the door, say, Do you have a trash bag? My dog just, you know, please be kind to other people. They shouldn't have to go out and step in that. It's just not fair. Thank you. Uh, Brian? Um, we started uh, recreation basketball in uh, November. 
that we just finished up in uh, the first week of March. Um, I just want to go over the program as a whole. Like we had first and second grade playing together, um, third grade by themselves, fourth, fifth, and sixth um, played together. Like just watching all these kids progress, like with the sports, with the sport, it was fun and like um, rewarding for me. Um, I think one of the things that helped helped us this year with the program was we did skills and drills. Um, for a longer extended time than last year. Last year we did it, and it was like one or two times. This year we did it for a month. And all the kids that came out, you seen what happened, like they all got better throughout the season, toward the end of the season that I wanted to stop playing. Um, just wanted to say thanks to all the parents that brought the kids out and continue to bring them. Well, I know how hard you're working on the program, so how much time you put in, so as a, we want to thank you for your hard work. Thank you. He's there every night of the week. There's something going on with him and Lee and Rain, your husband. So you guys do a great job. And uh, and Mr. Benson. So we got a good rec board moving in the right direction. Maria? I don't have anything except for um, now that the weather is getting better. Um, I'm still trying to decide on a cleanup date. Uh, but now that the weather is getting better, I will be doing my walkthrough with Amtrak um, and possibly with uh, SEPTA as well. Um, to get them also involved in cleanup. Um, that's about it. I will let everyone know of a date uh, one time is decided. Okay. Thank you. Louis? Yes, uh, recently I was reading a, uh, an article on the Long and Foster uh, brochure and they were talking about public art and how popular uh, it's become and how attractive to some communities. And this is out in the West Coast and they've actually have a public arts archive, uh, which is a website that they're actually putting this information out for everyone because it's so, uh, so popular. When I start thinking about Bristol, we've had various, for years now, we've had various forms of public art and I don't know if, if we appreciate it as much as, as we should, or even if we advertise it, how it can make a difference for our town. I was thinking originally of the, you know, the Grundys put up the gazebo out on the, uh, out in the lagoon, um, which is a piece, you know, piece of artwork. And the, and I thought of the riverfront lantern down by the, uh, behind the theater and the gazebo and the lion statue and, and then the whole riverfront park there with the uh, Columbus bust and the uh, AOH's monument and the uh, Puerto Rican uh, citadel or whatever that is there and uh, Harriet Tubman Ross. Uh, yeah, we, we have, a, and the uh, AOH has the uh, the statue of the soldier, and then the uh, Lions Club uh, in a bust of Senator Grundy. So there's a lot of public art right here in town, and I think this is something that we should uh, promote to keep more people coming back into town. It's, uh, it's totally a different thing. I even thought the, the Aaron Fox fire truck is really a piece of public art. When you see that down there, it's it's just unbelievable that it's been around since the 1920s. But uh, but I think this town has a lot a lot that we don't even always realize how how popular it is or could be. And uh, I'm going to look into this, this site just to see if there is something that we can 
have one there as an attraction to town. Correct. So, so hear me out. And late. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I just want to say uh, thank you to uh, the residents of the West Ward. Has been uh, Aqua's been very busy in, uh, in the West Ward, and I know it's uh, it could be a nuisance moving your car and making sure that you know you're not in the burger's way. But um, matter of fact, my neighbor they were on vacation, and their car had to be moved by another neighbor. So uh, I just want to say thank you to the uh, to the residents, uh, just being flexible and uh, understanding that uh, you know there's a job that needs to be done and um, working within that. So thank you. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Just a couple quick things we touched on earlier. The shred event that we're going to have uh, in town. That will be at 10 a.m. to noon on May 4th. So if you have anything, get your files or taxes. I think that's important. You want to shred it. Jeff, do you have anything? No, but most of what I'm going to talk about is coming up to your regular agenda. Jim? Okay. okay, so that'll end our work session. We'll move on to our regular meeting. And I, there's nobody in, so we'll end public participation. Okay, so I'm going to need a motion for number two. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to accept council meeting minutes for February 2024 to accept the treasurer's report for December 2023, to accept the fire chief's report for February 2024, to ex accept the inspection report, department report for February 2024, to accept public works department report for February 2024, to accept the police department report for February 2024, to accept harm report for February 2024. I have a second. Second by Mrs. Figueroa. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Mr. No. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve lot line change for 2210 East Farragut Avenue. Plans dated July 13th, 2023. List revised December 6, 2023. Expiration date May 30th, 2024. I make that condition on the resolution that I prepared and gave to council with all the conditions known. Second by Mr. Gatrochi. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Opposed? Number four. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve land development for 802 Bass Street. Plans dated May 2nd, 2023. Last reviewed October 25th, 2023. Expiration date April 21st, 2024. Along with the uh, approval with the uh, April 11th, 2024. Along with Gilmore uh, letter and uh, actually, and, uh, you so could just far. reference a resolution that was provided, as well as the additional six items that came from the work session. So is there a second? Second by Mrs. Collins. Mr. Mr. Cousin. That's his word. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. You can have it. I didn't see his hand. <laughs> it's all right. Nobody, nobody was raising their hands. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to accept 1681 social. Wait a minute. I didn't finish number four yet. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So any <laughs> questions or comments? <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Opposed. So Louie made the motion and Lee seconded it. Number, number five. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to accept 1681 social media proposal. I have a second. Second by Mrs. Figueroa. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Opposed? Number six. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve an ordinance amending the provisions of Chapter 10, Health and Safety. Subsections 10 301 and 10 302 related to the definition of motor vehicle and adding additional motor vehicle nuisances. I have a second by Mr. Katrucci. Questions or comments? All those in favor? 
Aye. Opposed? Number seven. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve one year co responder agreement effective 4 dash, I mean 4 1 24 with Bucks County Commissioner, Commissioners Bristol Township, Bristol Township, Tullytown Borough, and Bristol Borough. Bristol Borough will pay 25% of the cost for the two co responders. Established cost to borrow for 12 months is $49,000. I have a second. A second on this bigger row. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Number eight. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to authorize award or reject the bids for sale of used vehicles. Oh. So that, that's per uh, Angie's memo dated. So we're making a motion to award. award. So let's get a second, then we can talk about it. I get a second by Mr. Cousin. So discussion on it. There's a in your packet. There is a list of what's being sold, and it's the Ford dump truck. Uh, somebody from Quaker Town. Somebody from Southerton, somebody from Falsington, somebody from Brooklyn, New York. So it was on the municipal bid list, and these are all the prices that came in for each item. Does anyone have any questions on them? You want to be okay with it? Everybody okay? All right, so. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Number nine. Mr. President, I'd like to authorize Shredder event for Saturday, May 4th, 2024, from 10 a.m. to noon. I second by Ms. Figueroa. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Everybody's quiet. One more. Number 10. Nobody wants to do it? I'll do it. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve a memorandum of understanding UAW Local 1612 grievance uh, with Jose Rosado and Paul Yassi. I have a second. Second by Mrs. Figueroa. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Can I get a motion? I, have, I would like to make a motion, motion to adjourn. I might as well. Second, get all the other second by uh, <laughs> Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson. Bridge. 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 Bridge.